Hey, babe. Hello, all, and welcome to the Affluent Marriage Podcast. You're listening to one financial coach and one educator talk about living a rich and full marriage through generational wealth building principles, authentic two way communication, and everything in between to become a couple that lives in love and walks in wealth. Your legacy begins here. Hey. Hey. That was really good. You know, I'm proud of you. We're working on it. Yeah, you are. So <laughs> we're here. You'll remember it soon. This is, I, you know, I got to say, <laughs> every pod, I'm looking more and more at that camera and less at you. And I don't know if that's good or bad. I just like looking at you. But, you know, I am memorizing that. I, and I'm for that, I am proud. I am proud of you. Now, before we kick things off, we went live on Instagram and said hello to people. And they kind of got a little deep dive into our background and our setup mm-hmm. and kind of how we do things and what we got going on over here. We also have two children in the background who are supposed to be going to bed. Hopefully they don't interrupt, but we'll see. you we'll never see. know. Fun fact, you know, if you want to know stuff that's happening behind the scenes, this is our third take. <laughs> it is. We actually this shot podcast. this a couple of days ago and uh, Kimberly and I were very sniffly and congested and tired and just didn't sound good. And we just shot this and found out that the phone ran out of storage and mm-hmm. the children were screaming in the background. Yeah. But honestly, them screaming in the background saved us from doing an hour long episode and finding out none of it shot. True. You know, and so you got to find the silver lining in every situation. So that's that optimism that I have. You know, yeah. And we're going to talk about that today because we've already talked about it a couple times today. So, so speaking of that Instagram live, there was someone who had a question. Yes. And so we wanted to take a question. We asked if anyone had any Q and A's that they wanted us to, um, you know, say on air while we were recording and we wanted to go ahead and take little smalls question. So little smalls on Instagram, this is your question that we're going to answer. She said, is there something that you are maybe proud of that previous Kim and Dan did? Like if you could talk to, you know, young Kim and Dan, what would you be proud of, whether it's in your relationship or in your financial journey? Um, and I loved that question. I was just going to say, I absolutely love that question. Mm-hmm. So shout out to little smalls for, giving us that, you know, little, little question. packaged gift yeah. to talk about. And make sure that if you're like, ooh, I have a question, you're welcome to comment below. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify, I think there's a way that you can, like, you know, message or comment us or whatever, but you can, you're welcome to send us emails, find us on Insta. Like we'd love to connect yeah, with I think you. This is so a if great you have way, any questions, bring it on. I think this is a great way to kick off the show on our, you know, free Monday show where yeah. everybody gets a little piece of this show and you can ask your questions and maybe get some answers. Mm, I love I like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So answer. So when I was thinking about this question, as we were setting up for the show, um, it really reminded me of a time in our life when we showed a lot of resilience mm-hmm. and optimism through it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a season where well, first there was a season where you and I were both private school educators and you were making 28K and I was making 28K and we didn't make much, but we did everything we could to pay off our student loans. But the part that I wanted to focus on was there was a time when you left private to go public school, but I want to focus on my time going from private to public because it was a struggle. It it was a moment. Not, Um, Not in time, you know, but it was a struggle and effort. Mm -hmm. So the little background here is when I was transitioning from private school to public school in Howard County public school system, there were two other colleagues of mine that worked at the same private school that I did that were also trying to get into the Howard County public school system. Yeah. Now, one of them had been trying to get into Howard County for years. It's not like the easiest, at least at that point in time. Now it's a different season it's now, a, yeah. right? Education has changed. In our it area. has shifted in the last 10 years, which is crazy to think, you know, when you're in school and college and they talk about like that pendulum swinging and seasons changing, Yeah, it seems like that was something that happened like every 50 years or every, but like, man, think, that pendulum has swung. Yeah. And I think the, the pandemic has like really, really like sped up some things about what we really want, don't want, what we're looking for in our education. But when you were going into the county, it was a very, it's very rigorous and it was hard to get into the county and get into, you know, desired places because people would not leave. (laughs) Right. I had to go through four interviews just to get into the county and man, it it felt like speed dating. Like I sat down at a table with a random person. It was like, you had 10 minutes to 
tell them everything about yourself. It was, yeah. it was crazy. But when it came time to finally interview with principals at schools, th- two other colleagues and myself um, ended up getting called to the same exact school for an yeah. interview. And I remember talking to one of my colleagues and they were really excited because they got an interview at the school. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have an interview at that school. Yeah. And I don't even know if I knew the third person had an interview until I was like going into the building and they were walking out. And yeah. I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, you, wait, how did you get here? <laughs> you interviewed here too. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't nervous going into the interview, but then when I knew my colleagues were also yeah. interviewing for the same school, it just, it does something to your psyche where you're like, Oh, this isn't just me versus the world. Like this is me versus my friends. Yeah, And it's a little, a it's a little tough. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I went in, I gave it my best shot. I said everything that I wanted to say. I answered all their questions the way I wanted to answer. I mean, I really truly felt good yeah. about that interview. And when I got out, you know, I was confident, you know, I was telling my wife about it. But then I saw on Facebook that one of my yeah. colleagues got the job and they were celebrating. And I wasn't even honestly wasn't mad, wasn't envious, wasn't yeah. jealous. Like I celebrated with them because this was the person who had been trying to get into the county all these years. So Mm -hmm. good for them, you know, that they finally got it. celebrate them. Hey, this is Kim Graham from the Affluent Marriage Podcast. We hope you're enjoying what you're listening to so far. But if you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish I knew more about what's going on in Kim and Dan's world. I want to ask some specific questions and be able to get extra resources. Well, you might want to think about joining the Graham fam. Now, I know I love exclusive content and I love having more of Kim in my life. And if that's something you're interested in, you can be a subscriber and you can get exclusive episodes that no one else is going to hear that's going to help you build generational wealth and have more authentic two-way communication. Links are down in the show description. You'll be able to click and see more information about GramFam and we hope to see you behind the scenes. Have a great one and let's get back to the show. But here's what I did. After I found out that my colleague had gotten that job, I actually called up the ad- admin, the, the administration of that building, and I said, hey, first and foremost, congratulations on your most recent hire. Like I know her personally. She's an incredible uh, hire. You are not going to regret hiring this person. But then I asked them this question. I said, but why not me? Mm-hmm. And they had to be transparent with me and tell me what was it that this person had that I didn't. And ultimately it came down to experience. Yeah. This person had more years teaching than I did, which, you know, I accepted. And I don't know, maybe that was a cop out answer for them. I mean, it doesn't matter. But, like you asked, you showed up. But here's what happened. Because of my transparency, they knew where I was interviewing next. And they actually called the admin that I was going to and said, Hey, there's this guy, Dan Graham. He's coming to interview. We were like very close to hiring him. He's a very strong candidate, but we ended up going with someone else because they had a little bit more experience, Mm -hmm. which really gave me a leg up going into this next interview. It's true. So I go to this next interview. This is school number two. uh, And as I'm going into the building, the other (laughs) colleague is walking out with a big smile on her face because she just rocked it. Yeah. And I was like, man, like here I go again, (laughs) going into another interview. This is school number two. And this is my second colleague. And I did, every, like, I literally did the best, like, even better, probably yeah. the same time. You know how, like, you do something more than once, like this podcast, and, <laughs> you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yes. And I really felt confidently in mm-hmm. that one, even more so than the first one. And not to mention, I was a minority in that sense. Yeah, because you were the only male. there were, like, no men in that building. Yeah. And don't you know I did not get that job? I struck out <laughs> zero for two, you know, mm. lost out to both of my friends. You know, they, I guess they're better teachers than me, but it's all good. It's not all good. Not at all, though. They, they was a, it was a tough battle. But you know what? I, I thought about this now. Like, you created a lot of networking opportunities during that too because you kept reaching back out to the admin to say, hey, thanks so much for your consideration. Is there anything I can do if you need anybody to do long-term subbing? Like I'm here, I'd love to support and help. And the the admin, like like the admins were like coming after you even further, like Correct. later on, like in your, in your career, they were like, oh, you know, oh, we know about Dan yes. Graham. So when they moved schools, they remembered him and they were like, oh, you should come to my school. I think that, I think that's a really good trait in that resiliency. So to wrap up that story, I ended up being a long-term sub for a hot three days. And then I got an interview the mm-hmm. day before school started and I got the job at Clarksville Elementary School. Yep. Uh, but I did make a lot of network connections along the way. And then there were summers that principals were calling me during the summer asking me to come work at their school yeah. uh, because they knew the quality teacher that I was mm-hmm. and still am, but now I'm in physical education, Yep, <laughs> you know? So I don't know when I think about that question and something I'm proud of, that's a time in my life when throughout the whole thing, I never like 
got depressed or wallowed. Like yeah. I always bounced back. It didn't matter how many times I fell down. I got back up. Yeah. And I like that quote. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, I was resilient the whole way. And I think that that really shows a lot about even today with our wealth building principles, right? right? There's a lot of resilience and discipline and motivation. <laughs> I don't know why it's a discipline. Uh, uh, you're going to hear a lot goes, about discipline. <laughs> that goes into it, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, that's uh, one of the things that I will say in reference to that question is I really appreciate that previous Kim and Dan, young Kim and Dan, um, had the where, had had the cognates that, cognizant i don't even know yeah, if that's the, the right word. had the whatever had the understanding of communicating with each other and we've known each other for a really long time like we've been friends for a really long time Say and i know number. that that's a leg up we've been together for 21 years i just like hearing we the number married for nine or no no married David. for 12 we were together for nine oh, golly um and so we had a lot of history of like communicating. But the thing is like you can know a person for a really long time and have dreams and goals of things you'd like to do together. But nowhere in those dreams when you're talking to your spouse or talking to your future spouse, your boyfriend, are you like, oh my gosh, and we're going to have a house and we're also going to have $76,000 of student loan debt. Like you're not yeah, dreaming not that. Sexy. That's not sexy. <laughs> you're not dreaming of that. You're only dreaming of the nice, pretty things, right? And the things that you'd want for your family. So we had those dreams and those goals. But when this rift came up between the both of us and we recognized, well, we have to do something about this. I have no idea what to do with it. This was not a part of the dream. We had a choice to either, you know, just, you know, let it be there and let it fester and just go, well, let's, this is just a part of our ball and chain, I guess. That's what they're talking about. And let's just lug this around. Or we, could understand how to communicate with one another and say, I don't like this. Do you like this? Oh no, you don't like this either. Okay. Uh, do you want to get rid of it as soon as possible? All and right, yes, let's please. do that. And that's, that's what we did. And we, that's where the teamwork came into place. It didn't start off with like, I want to be a millionaire. That's not what it started off. It, it, none of the conversations were necessarily around that. We wanted to be filthy rich, right? We just started out saying we didn't want to be broke. We just didn't want to be broke. Like we just wanted to, we didn't want to be broke. And we knew that this was one thing that was going to cause us to have less money to go towards things that we desired, which so, helped push us into jobs, into yeah. the County to make more. But I'll say this for our relationship, you'll know, or for any relationship, you'll know, who you're married to or who you're dating. Like when ish hits the fan, right? when things get hard, you'll see your spouse's true colors. Oh, for sure. Right? Oh yeah. You'll know, are they in it to win it with you or are they looking for a way out? Right, right. Are they are they willing to sit down in the, in the muck with you and just go, okay, I'm willing to understand this. I'm willing to understand your side of things. I'm willing to, to figure out how to solve this problem with you as opposed to I'm just gonna constantly be stuck in my ways and I'm going to dig in my heels to this is what I feel like we should do and this is it. It's my way or the highway. Because um, here's how I knew you, you were. you easily could have said, oh, this is just the way it is, Kim. Like, let's just deal with it. Like, everyone has debt. It's not a big deal. And I easily could have been like, no, no, no. And it would have been such a hard start for us to communicate. Right. But see, here's how I knew you were my ride or die. Because when I was transitioning into the county, there was a chance that I wasn't going to get paid at all that year, right. except for maybe some sub pay. And it just would have been you bringing in money as an educator. So that not, not big money, but bringing right. in money. And then I did been a sub. Yeah. And you were cool with that. Yeah. If that's the way it played out, you were like, look, I know this is your dream to get into the county right now. So whatever it, it takes, let's make it happen. And that's how I knew like, yeah. okay, this one's for real. <laughs> that's if how you I didn't knew. know after the first nine years of dating. That's how you knew. You know, four, yeah. four years into my marriage, that's when I knew. But I think that's where our marriage really was forged as like, we are we are in it to win it. And that's why building wealth and talking about these things aren't hard because it started with those tiny little decisions from previous Kim and Dan. So anyway, great question from Wonder, honestly, Little Smalls. Question. And uh, I hope that was helpful. And in, you know, for you, I don't know if you're, you know, if anyone's oh, it was. listening it was. <laughs> and they're in a relationship or, you know, they're, they're trying to talk and they're having these dreams with their spouse of like, this is what I'd love for our, our ideal like relationship to look like. Listen, really have the conversation, okay, when ish hits the fan, what what are we gonna do? Because it's not a matter of like, if, it's when it's gonna right. happen. <laughs> yeah, I know if that question got me fired up about the show, then you know, I know it's a good question. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I know it, it spoke to somebody. So yes. here's where we're going today. We're going away from Rachel soon. Oh. This is our final, final takeaway 
from the series We Should All Be Mil- Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. But we know she's coming back. Abs- oh, we're going to see her one day. I mean, I, yes. I know you keep saying I like we're going to have on the show. Like she's going to be on the show with her husband. She'll we're going to have one of the interviews that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Why not us? Why not? Why not? Right? Audacity. We have the audacity to think that it could be us. But I do think we loved this book so much and we loved all the other books that we've read so much that we're continuing to read. We know we're going to be referencing this book often. Often. Yeah. Often. Once I get it back from my mother-in-law and I can get some of these quotes down. She's still reading. (laughs) But anyways, so, you know, a little house housekeeping before we get started. Uh, We release new content every Monday and Thursday. Our Monday content is for the every man. It's for every single person. Mm -hmm. All right. Just listen in. We answer your questions. You know, when we go live, you have questions. We'll answer them on the free podcast. And on Thursdays, our exclusive content just for the Graham fam. Graham fam. So if you have not learned or don't know about Graham fam yet, it's our membership. So it is a subscription, but you do get additional resources and deep dives into some of the topics that we talk about that we go a little bit deeper into. And you're going to be able to get a little bit more um, deeper behind the scenes content. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure Sure that you can check the links in the description in the show notes and you'll be able to go ahead and get yourself ready because we already have an episode out from last week that was so good about networking and how to specifically start building your business um and you know just like we mentioned with what you're doing in your your job and how you network with different people we literally are talking about how you do that in your business and also in your personal um in your personal lives let me say this about that exclusive episode little plug here for that episode did you know that 86% of millionaires have a particular relationship in their life that helps them get to that millionaire status? I believe it. We talked about four relationships on that exclusive episode, and one of those relationships is going to be a critical factor mm-hmm. and role in helping you build crazy wealth. Mm-hmm. And that, that's crazy, right? Like you're one relationship away. One. <laughs> one relationship away and we from tell being you able to is. completely change your wealth for five dollars for five dollars we're going to tell you how to do it <laughs> wow all right, all right are you ready started. yeah let's do this takeaway number six Woo-hoo. let's do this all right here we go mm-hmm. takeaway number six the last one let me look at the camera while I smack this mic. All right. Women, I, I literally just okay. hit my mic. That's why I said that. Yeah, it's all good. That wasn't like an expression. What are we, what are we learning about women? Women yes. should use their wealth mm-hmm. to create positive change in the world. I think we can all agree. Yes. They can invest in causes they care about, mm-hmm. support other women, and use their financial power to make a difference. Yes. What a feel good episode. What a feel good episode. Can I tell you something that I did today that connects with us beautifully? Mm, I love that. So today, uh, I, current events. I got asked current events. I got asked to speak at a direct sales convention conference for a small direct sales company. And I, I was speaking to their leaders and their leaders are the ones who are at the, you know, they have teams of, of women that they connect with, that they support, that they are pouring themselves into. Um, and I was teaching them about money management in their business and also how they can teach their downlines money management. Because I feel like, and this is my own little soapbox, that is something that a lot of businesses in general um, are missing. They will teach you how to make money. They will tell you to sell but they will not tell you what to do with that money. And that is a problem. So I'm so happy that this particular company saw this need and said, hey, can you come and teach our uh, our leadership how to make sure that they're managing their money properly so that, you know, that helps everybody, right? So one of the things that I asked them about is what they were passionate about. And would you believe like this room full of women all have big dreams, big goals, and not many of it had to do with selfish wants or desires. Mm. They wanted to help others. Women are I love that. givers. One of them was like, I really, my philan- I want to be like a philanthropist for the people in my community. So I want to be able to help if I know that there's a family in need. I want to be able to just go ahead and help them. So I do that. Um, and so she was talking about when she goes to different trips for her kids, for her families, where they're able to help other people, that she always puts in a little bit of extra so that she can help another family in need. Um, that she'll make a you know family reservation for four, even though it's just her going because she plans on inviting people with her that might not have had an opportunity to eat. And I'm like, what a beautiful thing that 
on what she's bringing in doesn't have to be a lot, but she's already making plans to give to others. There was another woman in there that talked about how she really wants to help, you know, um, you know, battered and, and, and pets and pets that are not in safe homes and being able to give them safe havens. And she loves to give to charities like that. There was one person and she was getting, I mean, there were people crying in there talking mm. about how what they want to do is write a check so that they can pay for the kids that don't get lunches at schools um, because they don't get public funding because it's a private school. And I'm like, this is a full of women who probably have these misconceptions around money that if I have money or if I bring in a lot of money or if I bring in a lot of wealth, but it, it will make me greedy or it will make me whatever. And we've talked about this, right? But I had to bring that to their attention that this is why exactly what you're doing, you deserve to have wealth on your end so that you can do more of this. You're already doing it on a small scale. You can do it on a bigger scale. The more that you pay attention to where your money is going, the more and the the more impact you can make on these communities that you're already so passionate about because more money simply amplifies what's already going on within your heart. Um, and so they really were like, whoa, that, that brought it home for me because I've been afraid to look at my money. I'm scared to look at my money, but I will write that check every, every week, whether I, I have it or I, I'll write as much as I can. And I'm like, but what if you could do more by getting over this hurdle of like looking at your finances. So yes, women can do all of these things. Right. And I love that you talked about how different people have callings to give yeah. to different things. Like some women were called to give to orphans or mm -hmm. to children and, you know, to organizations that are going to take care of their health care and their schooling and their food and their shelter and their clothing, you know, and then some are called to taking care of like animals and, right. and other, like, I think it's just beautiful that there's so much in this world that you can give to, to uh -huh. make it a better place. You can make a positive change anywhere. in so many, like anywhere you point, right? Literally just, just point, throw a dart <laughs> and you'll be like, that's what I'm going to try that's and do. Something that that's I, it. yeah, it'll probably land on a piece of trash and like, you know, I could pick up the trash in the neighborhood. Like you can you could give to an organization that cleans the environment, you yeah. know, like there's just so much out there. Yeah. And I just think that's, that's awesome, but it can also be overwhelming mm -hmm. because there is so much. But I love that you talked about common misconceptions. Yeah. Because I do think there are some common misconceptions. We talked about this a little bit before the show started, um, like maybe a day or so ago. What is one of those common misconceptions that you see when it comes to giving? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, well, I can't give as much or I can only give, you know, um, I, I, I can give like a dollar and that's all I can do. Or it's always the last thing that comes up. Right. Um, I think of tithing. Um, so we are, you know, we go to church and one of the, the things that we focus on in our church is like making sure that you tithe. And it's a biblical truth that you tithe off your first fruit. So when you first get paid, you pay the 10%, right? And many people have this misconception wherever they're giving that they give with what's left. But again, if you don't know what you're managing, you don't know what's there, you don't know how to manage it, you're never going to have what's left. Or you're always going to be like starving for what's left. Like, oh no, that's all I have. I can't give that away. Like that's all right. I've well, got. Most you people know? end the month in the red, right? Right. And they're not ending in the black. So right. they don't really have anything to give right. at that point. So that's normally what they say. I don't have any more to give right now. Or, you know, I just don't think it's in the cards for me to be a person who like gives more um, to these things. I would love to give to these things. I'd love to do everything um, to give to this charity or whatever, but it's just not in the cards for me. And yeah, the thing with that common misconception is they say, I'd love to give more, but I can't right now. What is Which right to me now? is just like a load of... It's a cop out. It's an excuse. Caca. <laughs> I thought you were going to say caca. You said cop out. Because cop out. the yep. truth is, even if it's only $5, mm -hmm. right? you've got something to give, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's $10, right. you've got something that you can give. The thing about money is it's gonna make you more of what you already are. Right, right. So when you come into more money and more wealth, you're gonna be the same person you were a year ago, mm -hmm. five years ago. So if you were really tight-fisted and it was really tough for you to give money to charities and organizations and whatever, I really don't, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're not gonna do it. Right. You're going to continue to be tight fisted. You're going to, especially. I mean, you before, might give them a little tip, you know, a little, right, a little, a little dollar bit or more. two. But. 
but you're going to be tight fisted. And if your mindset is still very much so towards, I, I just don't have enough, or even if you made that raise, yeah, sure. It might come up in spurts where you're like, we have some money, but you're on the rest of the time are going to be like, I can't like, this is, I, I'm not going to be able to step into this new wealth. I don't know how to do that because I was barely able to, to manage what was there beforehand. So how am I going to manage what's happening up here? Um, and there was more money, but I don't know where it is. I had a client <laughs> somewhere in my DMs today, this past week say, I got a wor- I got a raise at work. It's a twenty thousand dollar raise, but yet I have still have no idea where it's going. Like because none of your habits have shifted. More money is not the answer, right? So just because you make more money doesn't mean you're going to give more, right? It, it really comes down to you knowing that you want to be able to give to certain places and then being able to manage what you currently have and being fully aware of how much you're giving. And then the more money you make, the more money, the more you're going to be able to give to those things. Right. So. If you want to invest in charities, if you want to support other women, if you want to use your financial power to make a difference, I encourage you to start today. Yeah. Don't wait. Even if it's investing your time. Right. Even if it's investing a few bucks, right? Money is going to make you more of what you already are. And, you know, you talked about us tithing, right? Back when we only made uh-huh, this 28K. Is, I love this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, we gave our our ten percent, right? That's what we did. We honestly did it, and we didn't. Do you remember this? No, tell me more. We never did. I, I okay. I'll say this. My dad is a pastor. Okay, so my dad talks from the pulpit about tithing all the time, and I would always be that person who gave a five dollar here, ten dollar here, or a couple bucks here. Okay, like what was ever in my purse. I was. I was just giving a tip. I had no idea what that meant to tithe. I had no idea what ten percent meant. I knew what it meant, but I didn't understand what that that routine even looked like to give 10% had no clue. Um, when we got married, I remember my dad was like, Hey, cause you know, he's sees all the back office stuff. He's like, Hey, are you tithing? And he wasn't saying it like in a, Hey, are you tithing? He was really just like concerned. Like if, if you're a member, like this is a part of like, <laughs> what are you saying about my daddy? <laughs> but like, you know, anyway, so he was just really just like, Hey, um, are you tithing? And I was like, I don't know how to do that, Paps. Like, that's just not my thing, right? And when we decided to understand more about our finances and we took a Dave Ramsey class, which I know people have lots of different feelings about him, but listen, it was readily available. And I am so, so thankful for the teachings that he has. Um, And one of the first things that he wrote, writes on his, uh, what's it called, budgeting sheets is tithing. So when we actually started sitting down and writing that check, which what, you know, like was what, like, probably $300 a month maybe that we were giving to tithes. That was our 10%. And I remember going, oh my gosh, $300? It hurt. It hurt. Like, what do you mean you're going to give me, you're going to give $300? That's what tithing means. That's a lot of money. Um, But we kind of said it like, it, we need to we need to trust God with this. If if we're gonna trust God, we need to go ahead and tithe. And it's not like I'm. It's not. I need. I need. Pe- I need for people to understand this. He's not a genie. Okay. We're not saying God's a genie. We're not saying that this is about trust. It's about faith. Okay. So we were saying we're gonna trust that we're gonna give three hundred dollars because we need to show that we are are being a good steward of what we're bringing in. So we gave those $300 to, you could say, our charity, our church, our tithes. That was our promise. And I guarantee you, like after that, we worked off of what was left and it felt amazing to be like, oh, we still were able to end the month and we had money left over. That actually happened. And I was still okay. You were still okay. We still got to, you know, go out to get coffee every couple of times a a month. That was not so bad. When the extra jobs came in, like I'm telling you like opportunities for bringing in income just came in like crazy because we were aligned in saying, this is a goal. We want to give to this charity. We want to give to this organization first. Everything else seemed to fall into place. So do with that as you must, that you, what you you will. I'm going to say a couple of things about that. Yeah. First of all, I think part of that, the whole philosophy there is it's a mindset thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you give to a charity first and then you have the rest of the month to work towards your bills and your necessities and the things you have to pay, like you're going to find a way to pay that stuff, right? Right. Whereas if you flip the script, you pay all your bills and stuff and then you end the month with the charity and the charitable giving, 
you might have feelings like, ah, oh, I don't really yeah. know if I have it this month, right? There's a mental thing there. There's a mindset it's thing true. there. It's true. I also want to say this. Like you before me, like I'm going to take care of others. I'm going to take care of this. I'm also going to take care of myself because we did focus on savings and I'm going to take care of the rest. I don't know. There was a hierarchy there. Have you ever heard, this is like a parable I want to say it's like an African parable or something. I was looking it up, but no. have you ever heard the parable of the hunter, the monkey and the peanut? No, no. Where do you get this? You know, there's this thing called Google Oh. and it actually gives you information. Oh, and you can use that information on, on your podcast. Like podcast. Oh, okay. Got it. So here's how this story goes. <laughs> no, I actually, I didn't know it as like a jar. Let me get into this. One day uh-huh. there was a monkey. Uh huh. And the monkey was hungry. Yes. The monkey smelled the beautiful nectar of a peanut. I didn't know peanuts had nectar, but this one does. Oh, okay, I was like peanuts. And this nectar. this peanut was located <laughs> inside of a jar. Little did the monkey know that the jar was actually a trap <gasps> placed by the hunter. What? Because the hunter knew the monkey's greatest weakness, his addiction to peanuts mm. so here's how it works okay the monkey can fit his hand into the jar to grab the peanut mm-hmm. and then when he grabs the peanut he closes his hand into a fist and as he tries to remove his hand from the jar he can't get his fist out because the mouth of the jar is too small he was able to get his hand in when it was like open yeah, yeah. but when he closed his hand and made that fist made that ball right and wrapped it around the peanut he couldn't get it out of the jar and it was a trap mm-hmm. that kept the monkey from being able to get away as quickly and the hunter is able to catch him. So yeah. the whole thing here is the monkey wasn't able to let go. Mm. He wasn't able to have that open hand. He was tight fisted, right? So if your fist is closed off like that, it's true. And you're holding on to the little bit that you have, mm-hmm. not only can you not give to anybody, you also can't receive. Right. And you're kind of stuck. You're like zeroed in and you're hyper focused on this peanut, on this one little thing, right? right. Um, so. When I read that, when I read that parable and I thought about, you know, how it applied to what we're talking about today, I, I thought about that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't get as many opportunities when your fist is closed, right? Right. You're not able to receive anything else. Right. Right. And you're also not able to give. So don't be like the monkey who's so blinded by his addiction to the peanut that he's not willing to let go. Right. Right. We gotta focus. You need to be able to let go and be able to you know, seek out those opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many out there. And when you are, when you are aware of where things are happening in your finances and you say, I'm going to snap in and make sure that if this is a, is a goal of mine to give to this charity, to do this goal. And I make sure that everything is aligned to that. You will find so much more gratitude and you're going to be so much more satisfied and what is left that you're going to take care of yourself because you're going to feel so much more fulfilled. You're not going to be looking for other things to fill a void. Um, I think that's really where it is. It's such a weird phenomenon. And honestly, like it's, it's a mindset shift, but I can tell you that it feels really good when you know I'm giving to something that's higher, that's bigger than me. And I know that I'm making a difference in the world. Right. I want to get further into you know, this statement by Rachel Rogers, but for those that didn't understand the parable, basically I'm saying the monkey was greedy yeah, and because he kept it all to himself, you know, he got caught or he got trapped and he didn't, he didn't even know it. He didn't even know it. He didn't even know it. So back to this statement, women should use their wealth to create positive change in the world. They can invest in causes they care about, support other women and use their financial power to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So Here's where I want to go with this. I want to talk about investing in causes. So you talked about, um, you know, these women that had some causes that they wanted to invest in. Um, You also worked with a nonprofit, correct? I did. I worked with a nonprofit, and the 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 the, this nonprofit was absolutely beautiful. So uh, my friend Jess, who has Wahi Studio, if you're in Northern New York, she is shout out to Wahi Studio. Niagara Falls, um, and it's called Wahi Studio. Her heart was to help the students in that area 
um, be able to have access to art therapies and art um, outlets so that they can paint, they can learn new mediums, they can learn how to be creative with other ways than what they're normally taught in schools. And, you know, some schools were pulling out like, you know, art programs. So that is something that she's really passionate about. She does chalk festivals and she's a beautiful chalk artist and she does things like that for, for charity and donations and all that stuff. Um, and it's just for the students, for the kids. And yeah, so I, you know, have, have served, I've helped her with building this up, but also been able to help her. Um, and she's been able to, to get donations and other things from, you know, the people and that she's connected with. I love that. You know, I was doing some more research while I was looking up parables for monkeys and peanuts, right? Right. But I also found out a statistic. Which, which can we stop there? What a funny thing to Google. <laughs> I Parables thought, with monkeys and I peanuts. thought the monkey got his hand stuck in a tree. Like I thought he was reaching for yeah. something in a tree. Like that's the way I remembered the story. And yeah. like he couldn't get his hand out of the tree and then he got caught. So then when I read the jar, I was like, oh, this is different. But the same principle. Same principle. Okay. So according to Double the Donation, so I, I found this website okay. called Double the Donation. They had some statistics on giving okay. and uh, charities and such. I learned that companies often provide like a donation matching incentive yeah had you ever have you ever heard of that never heard of this no i think because we work in the public school system like i don't know that it's they not, have yeah. any it's not like a business that's gonna like match anything for you but a lot of companies and you might not even be aware that your company does this ask them you know see if they have a charity that they'll match your donation to but here's right. here's the stifling statistic to me okay so this sounds good but it also isn't all right so Two to three billion dollars. That's a lot of money, right? A billion with a B. With a folks. B. Two to B. three billion dollars are donated through matching programs annually. That's incredible. Wow. Right? Yeah. But then you hear that anywhere from four to seven billion in matching donation funds go unclaimed every year. That's crazy. So anywhere from two to three, people are actually saying, Oh, hey, my company has this you know, matching that they do for this donation. If I give 500, they'll also give 500. Right. Awesome. Two to three hundred, two to three billion dollars come in that way. But for the people that do that, there's like double as many people that don't take Actually up that take offer. Actually take advantage right? of it. Yeah. So imagine. Leaving that much money on the table. <laughs> leaving that much money. So imagine. <laughs> go to places. Four to seven billion more dollars being contributed to charities around the world. Like right. think about the seismic impact that yeah. would have on people's health care, people's education, people's shelter, their clothing, their food. I mean, it's just incredible mm -hmm. to think what that could do, that kind of and, money. And that's funny because guess what? We love to talk about how we wish that Jeff Bezos would just snap his fingers like Thanos and just get rid of world hunger. Um, and that he, you know, or that these other multi-billionaires could do X, Y, and Z. Listen, man, they're human. They're one person, right? If, if every single person who hemmed and hawed about what he's doing actually took initiative and said, you know what? What am I doing? How am I giving right. back? What am I doing to make sure that I'm making sure that my community, my people that I'm working with understand things like this, that that these companies are, are going to match these donations. We could probably do more, but we're over here saying to ourselves, oh, well, I don't have enough to give or there's just not enough or, oh my gosh. Like if we just took the time and effort to say, I'm going to align with these causes and I'm going to make sure that out of my first fruits, right? I'm using that biblical language, but out of my first amount of whatever's coming in, I'm making it a goal to say that I'm going to I'm going to give to this and I'm going to get matched. You're going to have more of an impact than you recognize. So we can stop focusing on these other people that we feel like, oh, why aren't they doing anything? You have opportunities as well. So your number one job, I'm going to kind of go off with your saying, your number one job is to raise awareness, right? right, Awareness in yourself and awareness in others. Yeah. You need to ask your company if they have a donation matching program. Mm -hmm. And if they do, learn more about it and take advantage of it. Yep. If that's something that you're interested in. If they don't, then straight up ask them why. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you have one? And why don't you consider starting one? Right. Right. What, what's the worst they're going to say? 
right? The worst they're going <laughs> to so, say is no. Right. And you're right back where you started. But at least you have an understanding. But it, the best thing that could happen is if they knew or if they're like, oh, yeah, we do have something. We just didn't tell you guys about it. Um, then you're able to take advantage of it. And you're able to know that your monies are going somewhere that are actually going to impact you know, places in your community. And you're able to tell your friends, your family, the people around you and your working environment. And there you go. You've changed the world, my friend. You've lit a little spark. <laughs> so here's the deal. So once you find this company, mm -hmm. um, if your company does this, here are a couple of tips that they said on this website. And I just want to make sure that I say this for the people uh, in case they do pursue this. Uh, number one, do not forget to actually ask for the match. So if you donate you know, if you're donating through your company, then they probably will match it. But just, you know, double check and make sure like, hey, I contributed $25. I just want to make sure that you're, you know, yeah. also contributing your 25 as well. So just don't forget to ask. You know, there's no hurt in right. asking. No harm. Um, on, on number two is understand the maximums. So understand how much are they going to match up to how much. Right. We will match your contributions up to $200, up to $5,000, up to some companies it said would match up to like ten to fifteen thousand dollars. That's insane. Isn't that insane? That's insane. Can you imagine ten to fifteen thousand dollars matched? Being matched, yeah. Straight up doubled. Going to World Hunger, going to, you know, your inner city, um, you know local community. Local like food bank. Can you imagine that type of impact, right? that you might have been able to say that over the year, let's just say if you did that over the course of a year, you were able to give enough to be matched to do that. A alone, you'd be able to help so many families be able to completely you know, change the way that they live because you decided to take initiative and ask for yourself um, if, you, if there are opportunities like this in your area. Uh, the next one is no need to give until it hurts. Yeah. I know we're going to talk about this later. You have another story of a friend who who gave a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll mm -hmm. come back to that later. But you don't have to necessarily, you don't need to give until it hurts, right? right. That's not the point of giving is to uh, to hurt yourself and like to give the shirt your, off your back. Yeah, yeah we're not, all that. we still want you to retire and yeah. live well, right? Um, it said, understand the pros and cons of donating with a credit card. So mm, anytime yes. you donate with a credit card, it's, well, you're probably going somewhere else. Yes. There is a uh, transaction fee of $2.50. Oh, that's where you were going. That's not where right. I was that's going. That's not where you were going. <laughs> so if you donate $100 via credit card, that place is only going to get like $97.50. Mm, okay, if you write a straight up check, they're going to get $100. Uh, some places, what they'll do is include that transaction fee, though. They'll say, oh, yeah. would you like to give us $100 and pay the transaction fee? So you'll pay $102.50. Yeah, I have seen that in like other places. Like our, our you know, like I was saying about tithing, our church just switched things over and they'll ask ask, hey, do you want to pay an $8, you know, extra so that it actually does not have to, they're able to get that whole amount. Um, so you talked yeah. about Wahi. Um, one in particular that I really like giving to is Michael Scott Dunder Mifflin's Granton Meredith Palmer <laughs> Memorial Celebrity <laughs> Rabies Awareness Pro-Am Fun Run Race for the Cure. Pro-Am. Pro-Am. <laughs> for the cure. For the cure. No, we're big office geeks. We love the office. Oh, yes. uh, and that was one of their, you know, charitable yes. offerings that they gave after Meredith. Found out that she yeah. had rabies. Found that she had rabies because Michael Scott ran over her with her car. <laughs> yeah, he broke her hip. He sure did. Uh, Man, spoilers. Spoilers. Great, great show. If you haven't watched it, if you're Office fans, let us know. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like there's a lot you can do to give back. Um, and supporting local businesses is a big one. You know, making sure that you are, uh, and again, no need to give till it hurts, right? Even if it's only uh, operating, a, you know, purchasing something from them, purchasing a gift from the locals instead of going to a Target, you know, doing that every once in a while is going to be a huge help. I love the saying that they, um, that these, every time you make a purchase at a small business, at a local business, you're helping them be able to get their kids into ballet class and helping them, you know, helping them pay off more debt, helping them, you know, do all these other things. Whereas if you're going to Target, you're lining the pockets of a CEO. Right. And not that CEOs are bad, not that they are evil. They are not. We need to actually like get that narrative out of our head as well. But we do need to do our due diligence and saying, well, if I am going to go to Walmart, if I am going to go to Target, what charities, what connections, what, what causes are they giving their funds to? So I know what I'm backing if I'm going to be shopping at Target, right? And what am I going to be backing if I go to the small business? Like, do I, do I want, do I like to be able to, uh, partner with them and what they are connecting with. Um, I have a client who does, um, 
Cinegens, which is a direct sales, right? But for her, it has a really big meaning because she has a heart for the black community um, because of the experiences that she had growing up. Uh, she is a medic, like she's an army medic, and she's gone to gone to overseas several times. She's been working for her country, and she has a heart for making sure that the black community gets support, that she's able to help these women and help um, you know the young men and women be able to have just the support that they need making sure that they when they go to the doctors that they're actually getting doctors that care about them because she knows about those statistics and she's so passionate about her culture and I love that about her because she's not just using her business as like yeah it's just whatever like whenever I'm supporting her and I buy my skin products from her I'm supporting her cause to help this bigger um this dream that's bigger than her, that's bigger than who she is. She's helping her community. And so when you are connecting with these small businesses, you need to be understanding that you are actually helping support other women. You're helping support causes bigger than you. And that is a beautiful thing if you're able to put more of your monies towards that. You know what else is a beautiful thing? What? Target. Target is Do you know why? Uh, Statistics (laughs) show that husbands are less verbally harassed when their wives walk around Target at least an hour a week. It's true. I just made that statistic up, did, but, but I really true. do believe that. Like Target, I don't know what it is. It it's the endorphins. You. It's yeah. it's like the endorphins of the the halogens warming your skin. That's from Legally Blonde. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> the next part of this, I love that you said Legally Blonde is Rachel Rogers talks about supporting other women, and I was going to ask you what does this look like, and my first note was keep it positive. If you do not know anything about the Legally Blonde musical, I implore you, go to YouTube, look up the MTV musical. It's a Broadway, but it was on MTV and it was televised. Legally Blonde the musical. You are welcome. You are welcome. It it changed me. It's amazing. I've never even actually seen the the movies Legally Blonde, but I've seen the musical. The movie, I know word for word as well, but the musical, it slaps. As you pull her hair and call her. So great, great musical. <laughs> so yeah, so keep it positive. So why did we say keep it? So what, how do we support other women? What do you mean keep it positive? Keep it positive. I mean, we can talk to women. We can support women. I think women are the best networking like we are, I just love it because we understand what each other is going through and we enjoy being human. We're not about like, you know, puffing our chest and being like, you know, bros, you know, we're not about that. We're about like, Hey, you're a woman. I'm a woman. I understand what you're going through. I'm not your bra. Um, and we are supporting each other. And so if I need assistance and I'm going to network with you, you're going to get me into the places that are perfectly fit for me. I'm going to get, make sure that you're getting into places that are perfect, perfectly fit for you. I'm going to understand when you're having an off day, when your kids are in the background and we're in a zoom call and they're like going crazy. Listen, girl, I have been there. I understand there is, I still see you as the amazing CEO, like rich, you know, woman that you want to be right. You're still wealthy (laughs) mama, but you know, we all have similar experiences. So when we're supporting women, it can be in so many different ways rather than just supporting financially. It also is just being an ear to listen, because let me tell you, especially for an entrepreneur, you're climbing, you're trying to get some more, um, you know, respect and clout and all that stuff. Sometimes that, that facade that you put, I don't even want to say the facade, the authenticity, authenticity, that powerful authenticity you put out online can sometimes make others feel like, oh, she's invincible. No, she still has pain just like you and me. And so it's important to see people as humans and support women just by saying, hey, how are you doing? Um, and supporting them. Yeah, I think men, you know, there's no, like it's not just women need encouragement. Like men, men need some compliments too, right? Like you, You're really pretty. Thank you. I needed that today. You know, I was having a bad day. So I really do believe that. Like, I don't think men, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just making this up, but I just feel like men don't get as much encouragement. Maybe even like men encouraging men. Like you're talking about women encouraging women. Like how many men are actually encouraging other men? Men. You know, sometimes you just try to act all tough and you're like, nah, I'm good. I got this. I'm okay. Right. Like, no, I don't. Dude, call me. Tell me. Tell me a positive. Tell me, give me a compliment. Lift me up today. Like I need that. All right. I'm not too, I'm not too proud, too big, too brave, too whatever to take a compliment. Yeah. Like I need that. Yeah. It's important. Uh, Something else we can do to support women is be an ally. We kind of talked about this on one of our first episodes that there is a inequality in pay 
right, with True. women. And we talked about in negotiating how you should research your worth and your value and, you know, salary ranges. I think as you're doing those things and you're finding out what your value is, if you see someone in your company, in your business that is not being paid their value. Oh, tell them. Please tell them. You need them. to tell them. And also tell your boss, be like, look, right. we've got this chick working and she is incredible. She does so much for the company. Right. Like, I don't know what you pay her, but if you don't pay her enough, she's going to be gone. Right, right, right. Yeah, we need to make sure that we rally I'm around her. I'm telling her to leave. Right. Like, I'm telling her, you <laughs> need, need to go to, find your worth. Right, we need to rally around her because we want to keep our people, the people who are doing amazing work. Like, if you, know? if you had a, a girlfriend that was like with a man or with, like, you know what I mean? Oh, and, for sure. And she was with someone that did not value oh, yeah. her. yeah. Oh, yeah, you would tell her. You would tell her. You would tell her. You Honey, tell no, her. no, no, you're worth mm -mm, more than this. Mm -mm. You're worth more than this. Please don't do that to yourself. You're better than that. Right, and you would same do the thing same with work, thing right? with work. Yep. Like, mm -mm, you're better than that And the job. same thing even in the entrepreneurial space. Like, I have told, there was one friend, and I'm going to call her out right now, Taylor, who uh, works in real estate. She's an absolute mastermind. I know, I'm calling her out. And she was, uh, we were doing like a swapsies. Like I, I was helping her with something. We we're doing a bartering thing. She was helping me with something. And the information she gave us about real estate in the 30 minutes to an hour that we were on our call blew our minds. Like we were like, whoa, we have a lot of options that we had no idea. And because you have this expertise here, she uncovered a whole world for us that we didn't even recognize was there. Um, and I was like, how much do you charge for this type of thing? And she routed off a number and I was like, honey, you need to 10 times that. <laughs> because the amount of transformation that you just given right. us from that one thing is gonna make us more money. <laughs> like, and I recognize that value. You need to charge more for this. And I feel like that's what we need, especially in the market place because as we mentioned in a couple of episodes ago women don't like having finding value in ourselves we, we feel like we have to work our way up the ladder to make ourselves before we can actually charge what we know we're worth um charge more for yourself and women we need to like rally around each other and go no you're worth more than that hun you're worth more than that <laughs> you're worth more than that you're worth more than 297 dollars kim <laughs> don't do that to yourself you know like it, it's important to to have that in supporting other women as well so in this episode so far, we've talked about the value in investing in charities and, you know, maybe finding a company that matches your donation. We talked about supporting other women a little bit. Um, I want to kind of talk about the benefits of giving mm -hmm. a little bit because yeah. there are like mental health benefits to giving. There's also tax benefits to oh, giving. There's, yes. you know, there's a lot of benefits, even in benefits for the receiver and benefits for the giver, right? right? There's a lot of good things that come from giving. Right. Uh, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention was just how it giving evokes happiness, right? Like when you give, there's almost like this, this helper's Giddiness. high, right? Like yeah. where, man, I, there's this guy outside of the store and he needed some cash or whatever. And I gave him a few bucks. I had him a wallet. Like you can't tell me you don't walk away from that. I know you, like it's supposed to be like, you know, uh, so but you just feel good. Like yeah. you're like, I just helped somebody. All right. How many of you are listening and think about that episode of Friends when uh, Phoebe is talking to Joey about a selfless good deed and he's like, there's no such thing as a selfless good deed. Or maybe Phoebe thinks there's no such thing as a selfless good deed. Anyway, um, and so she she can't go and, uh, well, oh, it's Phoebe, because she can't go around in a world where Joey's right. <laughs> so she tries to find a selfless good deed because she's like, no, there are certain things that you do that you don't feel good about doing it. Um, and then she ends up calling because she gives to Sesame Street. And she's like, I didn't like giving money to, self to Sesame Street because it made me feel bad. Like it, it was like something that was a painful thing for her. But then Joey got like the hundredth caller and he got like this big, you know, like praise for it. And she was like, yay. And she was like, no. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's awesome. what it makes me think of. Like there's no, there's, it's okay that when you're giving, you feel good about it, right? It doesn't mean you have to go and like be like, I gave this much, to this, but it's okay to feel good about it. And that's, that's honestly the point. Like you have a little bit of an endorphin rush. You know that you've given and you've helped somebody else. Not even that they have to know you. You just know that you did something. And that allows you to, to, have more purpose in the work that you're doing, have more purpose in some of the things that you're walking through because you know that you helped someone else. Um, I know we talked about like in employees, like if you are an entrepreneur, giving is also a tax deduction. Um, so let's talk about tax. Woo. Yeah. So like as let's your talk business about you get bigger. And me. Let's talk about <laughs> tax. Yeah. Taxes and 
I, I tried to come up with another. That's all right. A rhyme. I can do it. So here's the thing with taxes, right? Whether you want to talk about taxes, charitable giving, because I know it's a feel good episode and then you talk about tax and you're like, that's lame. But look, here's, and this is from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, okay? Employees and is like a little bit of like the benefits of tax and also like how the rich use taxes to their advantage, you know? If you're an employee, that means you are earning money and you're getting taxed off what you earn and then you try to live on what's left, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm a teacher, I get a paycheck, but before I even really get that paycheck, it's taxed. Right. And then I just live on whatever's less left. That's not the way it works for a corporation. How does it work for a corporation? A corp- and this is an advantage of the rich, right? Right. A corporation, when your business is actually making more earns, spends everything it can. And I like to just put in parentheses, wisely, spend wisely. And it's taxed on anything that's left. So anything that's left at the end, that's what you get taxed on. So that's why, you know, it's a big legal tax loophole, which is why having a, um, you know, having an accountant, having a CPA with you to help you with your taxes is like game changing because they're going to give you all the different things that you can actually write off. Um, And it's a good legal, it's a tax loophole that a lot of the rich use. Um, which is why a lot and good of these, for them. right. That's just why a lot of these We're bigger corporations the don't pay as much taxes because they are aware of these loopholes. And Rachel Rogers is aware of this too, right? Yeah. She says that the best way to build wealth is to own your own business Yep. for this exact reason. Yep. Right. But again, can everyone own a business? No. Mm-hmm. Cause just like educators, most leave within the first three years, same yep. thing with businesses. They, yep. most of them fail right. in the first three years, but like, hear this, right? I'm a teacher. I get my paycheck. It gets taxed. I live on what's left. So I go out and with that money that I have left, I have to pay my mortgage. I have to pay for internet. I have to pay for my car. I have to pay all these bills, right? But when you're a business owner, you get paid, Uh but then you say, well, I work from home. Right. So my mortgage is a tax deduction. It's true. And I need internet to do my job so that's a tax deduction and i had to use my car to drive to this business thing and that was a tax deduction and i got coffee that one day and it was on my way to a work trip and i needed that for my job so that was a tax i had a meeting at starbucks and it was a tax so (laughs) yeah (laughs) at the end of the year you're like you know you take all these deductions out and you look like you made less money than a teacher (laughs) yeah but you're a six-figure business owner yeah right that is the loophole Mm -hmm. that the wealthy use and is it because they're evil no no it's because they know the system and how it works right you're either going to get played by the system or you can lean in right (laughs) because the system doesn't care about you no it does not right and so you can be upset oh yeah you know you're a teacher oh i feel bad like let me take no they don't care they don't care yeah so Are you going to get played by the system or are you going to play by the rules of the system? Right, right. And actually like, you know, you could exploit them in that way, you know, of just being saying, okay, I'm going to take advantage of that. Like, well, actually you told me that I couldn't do this. And so I kind of did it the opposite way. And now I'm able to get more. So it's like a computer game. You know, if you're able to find a loophole, you find the loophole because you're able to get That's cute that you made yourself sound like a gamer. That was really cute. It was cute, wasn't it? All right. So (laughs) here's where I want to go with this. I want to wrap this up because we're approaching the hour mark. Our call to action for this episode is feel good. It's not like the words feel good, but it's a feel good call to action. (laughs) How can you make a positive difference in the world today? Yep. If you don't know the answer to that question, then I encourage you to go talk to your business, to your company, to wherever you work and see if they match donations for anything. Right. See if there's any organizations around you that do uh, and and figure out what you're passionate about. Because we didn't talk about this actually in this episode, but you don't just have to give money. You can give your time. There are some businesses and companies that will match. Yeah. Like they'll give you like money. So if you work for an hour for a volunteer, they'll match like, they'll give like $25. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost like they're paying you 25, but they're giving it to the charity of your choice. Yeah. So some, some companies do that. So 
find a way to make a difference. And it doesn't have to be money. It can be volunteer. It can be time, right? Yeah. And I think the the thing here is, again, being very aware of your passions, writing down a list of things that you would love to be able to give towards um, and finding ways that you can kind of add that into your day-to-day routine or monthly routine of just saying, this is where I want to give back and just do it and it, find the time to do it. Um, and so whether it is through your finances, whether it is through your time, whether it is through, you know, just teaching your kids and, and going by and donating something like you need to, if you want to be that person, if you dream about yourself being, oh, I love to be able to do this, but I'm multi, whatever, when I'm rich, don't wait, do it now. This is how you can start building that wealth for yourself in your heart of saying, I have always been this person. And the more money that comes in, I am just going to build on being more of that person that gives to these types of charities. That's just already a part of my DNA. So um, your affluent archive today yeah, is tell us to our little nugget of wisdom. give audaciously and also receive audaciously. And if someone is like, Whoa. Try receive, that ag- try that again, receive audaciously, receive graciously. There yeah, I is. didn't read. I couldn't there read that. Is. Give audaciously and receive graciously. Yes. <laughs> right. yes, that's it for today. For every giver, there yeah. has to be a receiver. And when someone wants to give you something from the bottom of their heart, how rude would it be to say no? Yeah. Right? Don't. Or to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't get you anything. Down. Don't, don't take away their, their blessing that they mm-hmm. want to give to you. So give audaciously to others. And when someone wants to give to you, be a gracious receiver be and receive it. Receiver. You're going to help. Like, don't take their happiness away. I just said yeah. giving evokes happiness. If you were to shut someone down and say, no, I don't want that. Yeah. You're taking away their happiness. Like right. you're actually making them happy by, by being giving. a receiver. Yeah, by receiving So it. receive graciously. Receive All graciously. Right. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of that book. Uh, we should all be millionaires and make sure you go pick it up because it's an amazing read. Um, and I hope that if, if it did, if you were able to read this, uh, read it, make sure you let us know. Um, find us on Instagram at the Affluent Marriage Pod on Insta. And you can also email us at hello at the Affluent Marriage Pod.com. And we are amazing. Maybe it's the affluent marriage.com. One of those. Send it to both of them and see which one bounces back. You'll know which one's ours. Um, and yeah, um, we hope you guys enjoyed this and we're excited for more episodes. Yeah, I'm just glad we made it through this episode. Four times a charm without our children My screaming. Golly. You guys Gracious. live in love, walk in wealth. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you guys later.